So this first bit should be review. When we launch an object into the air, we call it a projectiles, a projectile. And if we assume the Earth is flat, then projectiles travel in a parabola. In real life, you technically have to factor in the curvature of the Earth. But as long as you're not firing your projectile several hundred kilometers, it's not going to be something we need to take into account. It's one of the reasons you look at the parabola so much in math, is it shows up all over the place. And one of them is projectile motion. We could, last year, you learned how to find the vertex, and you learned how to figure out whether a parabola opens up or down, and you probably learned like 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. We, we could use all of that to actually analyze projectiles, but Dean, it's much easier to use vectors and to break things into vertical and horizontal components. So example one says, break the following velocity vector into its components. Let's draw, and I'd like to show you a shortcut. So, Vx, Vy initial. How come I put an initial on the Vy, but not the Vx? Just reminding myself, the vertical one is the one that's changing. Color, 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 color. Marcus, that 24, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. What about Vy initial? Vx. All right. Well, it looks like it's asking us to find Vx first. Uh, which trig function, Marcus, for Vx? Okay. Hopefully, you're at the stage where trig, where Sokotoa trig is becoming pretty casual. I think I said at the beginning of this course, my goal was that it becomes almost boring, that you realize, oh, it's going to be cos 36 equals Vx over 24, and I'm hoping you can go straight to your calculator from that line there, and you can realize 24 cos 36, 19.4164. Uh, I'll write 19.4, but if I knew I was going to use this, I would carry some extra sig figs. Ruby, which trig function is Vy? Say that again, you're correct. Sine. Which trig function? Sine. Wait, 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 wait. When we did the projectile at an angle in our notes, was Vy sign there as well? Say yes. Mr. Duick, if I always draw horizontal first and then vertical, will Vy always be sign? Will Vy always be sign? You know, Mr. Duick, it would be kind of neat if you had a stupid, clever way that I could, as a shortcut, somehow just remember that Vy is going to be sign. I, I got nothing. You'll have to come up with something on your own. Can you guess what Vx is going to be? Of course you can. That will work if you're looking for a cheap hack, Victor. But as long as you always draw the horizontal first, and then the vertical. Won't work for boat crossing a river or airplane in a crosswind because I don't know which way they're traveling. For a projectile, though, from the side, Taya, I know it's always going up and coming back down. It's always going to look the same. And so we can use that cheap shortcut if you want to. In other words, I'm going to write down sine 36 equals Vy initial over 24. But for projectiles from now on, when, if they give me an angle, did I say angle? Uh, Vy is going to be sine. And Vx, of course, you know the answer to that one, too. So I'm just going to backspace and edit. 14.1 meters per second. So you should be comfortable finding the components of a slanty projectile. In fact, that's basically, oh, yeah, it's a habit. As soon as you see a slanty projectile, did I say angle? Components. There will be a question on your test, I'm sure, where I just say find the vertical and horizontal components. You know what? It'll be a multiple choice question. It'll be one of those two column ones, and only one of the columns will have them all in the correct place.
What else have we learned? Kenta, this page right here might be when you're studying a good summary page to refer to. This should be stuff that you have understood, I'll say even committed to memory. So AX is zero because VX is constant. Or VX is constant because AX is zero. What this means is that D equals VIT plus a half AT squared turns into DX equals VXT. What happened to the plus a half AT squared? Gone, zero. So horizontal questions are much easier because actually we've lost the quadratic term. It means that if you know the time of flight, you can find the range, Vx times t, or it also means if you know the range, you can find the time of flight very easily. That's an easy one to get the t by itself. No need to square root or quadratic formula or anything. And I think I said yesterday, we're going to spend most of our time finding time. Once you have time, the questions fall, fall apart. Uh, vertically, VY is changing because AY isn't zero. It is a constant still. It's negative 9.8. So D equals VIT plus a half, DY equals VYT plus a half AY T squared. That stays there. If you're lucky, VY initial is zero, and so you don't need to pull the full quadratic formula out. That's not going to be happening today. Other handy things at the top of its arc for a split second, Vy is zero. Does that mean overall velocity is zero? No. Uh, we still have Vx. In fact, at the top for a split second, the overall velocity is Vx. Of course it is. Also, if you start on the ground and end on the ground, your initial vertical velocity is the same as your final vertical velocity, but the final one is negative. Because what goes up must come down. Finally, if you're starting from a, a vertical height, a cliff, make your vertical displacement negative because you are ending up below from where you started when you list data in your t-table. From those concepts there, everything else will follow. Mr. Duick, what Marcus? You said that projectiles travel in a parabola. Yeah, Kenta. I've seen some projectiles that appear to wobble. Fair enough. Put your pencils down, look up. What I really should have said is the center of masses of every projectile will travel in a parabola. But sometimes if the center of mass isn't dead center, for example, a warped basketball, you may have noticed if you toss it up and spin it, it will wobble. Uh, the center of mass is still following a parabolic arc, Nicole, but the object itself might appear to wobble. What do I call it? Center of mass trajectory is going. I forgot the name of the video. This is from our friends at MIT that have more money than I do. So first of all, we're going to toss the objects just under normal lighting. And these are objects whose center of mass is not the center of the object. First one is a badminton racket. And you'll notice it kind of wobbled as it spun. This one really looks like it's got a noticeable wobble. This disc has a weight off-center, so you're going to see when it spins, it really wobbles. That didn't look like a parabola. But now we're going to toss the same objects under black lights, but we have their center of mass painted orange. So the orange will fluoresce. We'll see that. But you won't be able to see the objects because it's dark. Did you see any wobble there? No, center of mass was a parabola. Center of mass was a parabola. What about that bowling ball stick thing, or that bowling pin stick thing? Nice smooth arc. And then we have that disc. So there's the center of the object. That's not the center of its mass. There's a weight off center. So this will wobble. So it jingling back and forth. But now, there's the center of mass glued on the back, and you'll see lovely parabola. 
So it's true, sometimes objects don't appear to follow a parabolic path. Their center of mass, Joanna, did. Okay? I had somebody a few years ago ask me about that because they had noticed sometimes when you toss a ball in the air and spin it, it's clearly wobbling. What's going on there? Oh, center of mass. The toughest questions, easiest are horizontally from a cliff. There's going to be one of those on your test. Second easiest is, like question two from the homework yesterday, ground at an angle. We'll practice those. The toughest is cliff at an angle, because that's got everything. There are a few strategies that you could do. One strategy, you're going to find time. We're going to spend most of our time, Ella, finding time. One strategy would be to find the time to the top by letting VY final be zero. Then start over, let VY initial be zero, figure out how long it takes to get to the bottom, and add them together. I'm not a fan. Another strategy you may get the whole answer all at once and just do it. I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, the third strategy, find the time to top by letting VY final be zero. Eliana, double it to get VY back to where you started from, just like we did yesterday for from ground to ground. Realize that your VY initial is negative VY initial here. Figure out how long it would take to get to the ground and then add all three of those together. Doable, not a fan. We're going to try and find time all at once, but it's going to require that we solve a quadratic or that we have a quadratic solver. I like example one, I like example one, example one is a nice question. Aiden, what does part A want me to find? What does part B want me to find? Probably on the test I'd just say find the range and I'd expect you to clue in that you need to spend most of your time finding time. Okay, what do we notice? We got a cliff and Aiden, do you see we're firing from the top of the cliff at an angle? Did I say angle? Step one, before I even start, I'm going to find VX and VY initial. Aiden, can you tell me which trig function VY is going to end up being? Can you tell me which trig function VX is going to end up being? Of course you can. So if I want to, I can build my T table right here. What were our two physics no-brainers? What was AX? A Y. I can write V X equals which trig function? You know the answer, don't you? Yeah, of course you do. Um, it's going to be fifty cos thirty, or I could go straight to my calculator and just. It's, I'll write that in my notes. But if you wanted to go straight to your calculator and just fifty cos thirty and write. I'm going to be using this, so I'm going to carry maybe five or six sig figs. Uh, 43.301 is a pretty good place to round off to. Uh, 43.301 meters per second. I'm going to do the same shtick for VY initial. Which trig function is VY initial going to be? It's going to be 50 sine 30. I think this one works out dead even to 25. Yes? So in our notes, I wrote down what we did. In your homework, if you want to go straight, do the trig on your calculator and just write down what VX and VY initial are. Kenta, I'm fine with that. What else has the question given me that I haven't used yet? Is that a vertical or a horizontal? I think you have vertical. Okay, so can I write DY equals 60? Say no. What do I have to write? Good. If Now, yesterday, if we missed the negative, we would have gotten an error on our calculator. For cliff at an angle, you won't, because the quadratic formula always gives you one positive time and one negative time. You'll just get the wrong times, one positive, one negative. So you've got to catch that. Uh, what do they want me to find? Which column do I know three things in? Oh, I didn't label. X, 
why, thank you for calling me out on that. That's what you were saying when you said the right one because Mr. Duick, you forgot to label it. I agree. Which column you're looking for a word that starts with letter V and rhymes with vertical? Okay. So for part A now, I'm going to go T equals question mark. I guess I'm looking for an equation, Aiden, that's got a T, an A, a VI, and a D in it. There is one. It's been the fairly common one that we've been using quite often. I like that you put the subscripts in. DY equals VY initial T plus a half AY T squared. Are any of these zero? This is going to end up being a full quadratic. I cannot get the T by itself using Math 11 equation solving skills. I'm going to have to plug in numbers and solve a quadratic equation. So it's going to look like this. Negative 60 equals 25t minus 4.9t squared. I got the minus 4.9. I divided the negative 9.8 in 2, or multiplied it by a half. Aiden, what kind of an equation is this? Starts with letter Q. How do I know? Because it has a... What's step 0? Yeah, kids forget that, especially those of you with the solvers. So, Aiden, although it would be less work to plus the 60 over, I know I've made more dumb mistakes when that thing has been negative, so I'm going to actually plus the 4.9t squared and minus the 25t. I'm going to get this, positive 4.9t squared, take away 25t, take away 60, that equals zero. And then I'm going to be lazy but organized. A, B, and C. If you have your solver, you're rushing off to that. But the rest of us peons that have to do this by hand, we're going to write out the quadratic formula. T equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And then we're going to carefully substitute our numbers in. Negative B. B is negative 25, so negative negative 25 is positive 25. Plus or minus the square root of negative 25 squared minus 4 times A times C all over. And 2A is back to that 9.8, but not negative. All righty, is this a fraction? Yep, 25 plus the square root. I'm going to use that same trick, Kyle, that I did before. I know that negative 25 squared is the same as positive 25 squared, so I'm not going to bother typing the negative on my calculator. It saves me a bracket and some extra typing. Minus 4 times A times C. Close off the square root, close off the top divided by 9.8. Do you get as one of your roots? That's totally wrong, Mr. Duick. Oh, the divided by didn't show up. The divided by 9.8. 5.33? No? Am I wrong? Nobody nodding. Okay, check for mistakes, Mr. Duick. Oh, wow, the 60 didn't even show up. I got a decimal there. Let's try that again. 6.88144795. Because I'm going to be using this, trust me, I'm going to write down maybe five sig figs and then I'll round to three sig figs. So I'm going to go 6.88145 equals 6.88 seconds. Now, there is another root. If I go and change the plus to a minus, I also get negative 1.779. What's the problem with that? In math, it's fine. Why not in physics? Time can't be negative. Does it mean anything? It does. Believe it or not, here's what that's telling you. If instead of going this way, if the projectile was traveling that way at a 30 degree angle below the horizontal at 50 meters per second, it would take 
uh, 1.78 seconds to hit the ground if it started on the ground. So it's actually, it is kind of neat. It is sort of saying, going backwards in time, that's how long ago you would have had to have started if you launched from the ground, which is kind of cool. But again, we reject, right? Like Arya trying to dunk, reject. Okay. Uh, oh, done. A. Okay. Jay, what's B want me to find? You'll notice I left way less room because you don't need to do a full bore quadratic. In fact, the range, that's horizontal. That's asking me to find a DX. What was AX as the number exactly? And so our range equation just becomes DX equals VXT. No half a T squared. What was VX? Uh, 80 something. What was it, Mr. Duick? I can't remember. 43.301. And time, you know what? I'm just going to use my answer button because why not? Uh, 6.88 and change. Oh, I can't use my answer button. I've got the wrong answer. Son of a gun. i got to bring this one back. Okay, now I've got that answer button. 43.301 times, haha, <laughs> answer button. 297.9, you know what? 298. Yes? Units, Jaya? Yep. Ah, is this a velocity? What is it then? Just meters. Verizon would look to hire you. Okay. What else can I ask? Well, I could ask time to reach the top. Now, the word top, does that suggest vertical or horizontal? Joanna. So as we get good at this, I may start getting a bit casual. If I know it's vertical, I might only do half the T-table, the vertical section. You'll see sometimes in my answer keys, I didn't... Oh, it's clearly vertical. I didn't even bother filling in the X's because yawn. Okay? So, all right. There's my brief for T top. Vertical. Joanna, what else can I use? Oh, I know this. A equals negative 9.8. Haha, <laughs> I took the no brainer. Good. That's two things. I need three things to find a fourth. Yeah. That'll work. I'm looking for an equation that's got a T and A, a VI, and a VF in it. There is one. Could you get the T by itself, please? And I would remind myself, vertical, vertical, vertical. You can again see, if people don't have that aha, V final is zero, they might be tempted to use the 50. Because we haven't used that yet, and I'm panicking. Or they might let the 50 be the initial, and they might let the 25 be final for some reason. Uh, so it's going to be zero minus 25 divided by that you get 2.551 seconds 2.55 seconds by the way how long did it take for it to come all the way back down and hit the ground then well Joanna how long was it in the air for a grand total Minus, it took 2.55 to get to the top. I guess it took 4.33 to come. There's all sorts of other information you could do. In fact, the fact that it took 2.55 to get to the top, it'll take 2.55 to get back to the cliff level. So I could even go 6.88 minus 2.55. Uh, uh, sorry, I could go and then minus another 2.55. That's how long it fell after it flashed past the cliff. Well, there's all sorts of information you can cleverly figure out if you need a time value for something. 
D is tough. D is tough. Eric, what does D want me to find? Not zero. That's the one that drove me crazy last year. What does it want me to find? Say it again. I don't know. You know what? I can dulp. I know what the impact velocity looks like. Kind of like that. Don't draw that just yet. Look up. It might be steeper. It might be shallower. But I'm going to kind of do a generic. I'll bet you it hit the ground. Draw that about like that. You know what? It hit the ground at an angle. Did I say angle? Always do horizontal first. This is going to be VX. Wait a minute. I know VX. Uh, what, 43, oh, what's, what was it? Uh, so I'm going to be using this. Give me it to five sig figs, please. That's why I wrote it down. In my chart, there's no way I only wrote to three sig figs. Eric, my friend, because I was going to be using it, 43.301. Thank you very much. You're lucky. That might not have made a big difference, but I always carry a few extra sig figs for emergencies. This here is going to be VY final at impact, not zero. I don't know it. Or do I? Let's walk off to the right in the margin here, and let's write down VY final equals question mark. We're going to kind of do a little mini vertical T-table without doing the full T-table. Eric, vertically, what else do I know that I can bring to bear over here? Can I still say AY is negative 9.8? Oh, that works. Can I still say uh, VY initial is 25? Yep. What else can I use here? I could. I wouldn't. But yes, you could use dy equals negative 60, and you would use vf squared equals vi squared plus 2ad. There's a little cleaner way to get there. What else do I know? I spent some time finding it. It seems to me that vy is occurring at 6.88 and change. 6.8814 seconds. 6.88145. T equals 6.88145 seconds. Eric, I'm looking for an equation that's got a VF and A, a VI, and a T in it. There is one. I get the VF by itself. Oh! Already is. That's why I went with that one. You could have used the displacement. The only it. Well, I'll show you one more thing. One reason you might have wanted to stay from it, away from it. So you're telling me VYF equals VI plus A times T How fast is this traveling vertically when it hits the ground? Time to go to your calculator. Eric, what'd you get? Negative. Does that scare me or does that relax me? Yeah, I'm looking at my picture. It was going down. If you had used the VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD, it would have given you the positive root, and you would have had to add the negative after the fact. We did that a couple of times last year. Did you get negative 42.438? Again, I'll carry five sig figs. This is not my final answer. But I can walk over to here, and I can say, okay... 42.438. Mr. Duke, what happened to the negative? Isn't it negative 42? Yeah, I, 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 the negative is the downward pointing arrow. Thank you very much. That, that's got the negative. Well, 
This slanty one here is the impact velocity. How can I find the magnitude of that? I think I'm looking for a theorem, Aiden, that starts with letter P. Pythagoras? Are you learning how to say big boy words now? Yeah, and this is the hypotenuse, so I think it's just going to be uh, squared, squared, square root, right? The impact velocity is going to be 43.301 squared plus answer button squared square root. Eric, did you get 60.6? Okay, that's the magnitude. If you stopped there, you would have found the impact speed. Did it say find the impact speed or did it say find the impact velocity? That's the vector. I need magnitude and direction. Where am I going to put the theta? Top left or bottom right? Where the vector is coming from. Color, 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 color. Uh, that 42.438 I think is going to be opposite that Vx is adjacent. And I'm going to make one more prediction before I go any further. Eric, how big is Vx as a number? How big is Vy as a number? If Vx is 43 and Vy is 42, are those really close together? This is almost an isosceles triangle, just under nerd trivia. You're all going to get an answer really close to 45 degrees. I just This is really close to a 45 degree triangle. That's a fluke. I didn't plan that. But it's always nice to have some built-in error checks. Uh, which trig function is going to be tan? So I'm going to go tan theta equals 42.438 divided by 43.301. I said it's going to be really close to 45 degrees, is it? 44.4 at 44.4 degrees what of what well if you said south of east I won't mark it wrong but I'll draw a frowny face because up is not north and down is not south and we're looking at a side view what we would say is we would describe this as below the horizontal. If it was on the way up, we would say above the horizontal, as long as you're finding the angle next to the horizontal line, which is why I've taught you for components, always draw the horizontal first. I've thrown a bunch of stuff at you, but also I would argue technically, Ashley, none of that's new. I don't think hopefully you were going, what witchcraft is this? It's oh I never thought of that, but okay, that makes sense. We can we can make those assumptions still. Example two, I like example two, I like example two, I like example two, example two is a nice question. What does it want me to find? Okay. What am I going to spend most of my time finding? Are we launching from a cliff at an angle? Did I say angle? There's our chain of thought. Okay. So let's go T table. This time, Aiden, I'll take your rebuke and I'll put the X and the Y there. I agree. Kate, what can I write first without thinking about it? Our no brainers. And the rest, I look at the question. Looks like we're firing from the ground at an angle. Did I say angle? So we're going to have a VX and a VY initial. Okay, which trig function is VY going to be? So let's go straight to our calculator and be a little bit brave here. It's going to be 35 sine. 20 
I get 11.9707, and there's a zero after that second seven, so I'll go to six sig figs, so that's a nice place to round off. 11.9707. Change colors, Mr. Duick. VY initial 11.9707. Kate, do you know which trig function I can use for VX? Of course it is. Thirty two point eight eight nine. Good yawn, Aiden. Good stretch. Losing tension. That's the unit after this. Um oh that twenty, vertical or horizontal. Okay. DY equals what? Good. Even though this said find the range, Nicole, what am I going to spend most of my time finding? So on your own, I'll do it up here. Try finding time. You can use the quadratic formula or a quadratic solver. We're going to be using dy equals vy initial t plus a half ay t squared. <sighs> Wow, Mr. Duick, you wrote that down terribly wrong. I forgot the plus or minus in the square root. Where'd that come from? And if you feel you found time successfully, well, then answer the question. Find the range. Check for typos. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared. I ignored the negative. Minus 4 times a times c. Close bracket, close bracket, all over 2a. And the other one should be negative, but we'll just do a quick check. Yep. Is that right for the time value? Do my answer button. I did the same thing as last time, Mr. Duick, but I can go back two lines and save myself a bit of work. Now I've got that.
lots of room to make sloppy mistakes on this. Some of you still writing? Good. How many of you got that one right? Okay. That's going to be on your test. I'm going to be really blatant. I could be nice and I could give you the range and say find the height. Then it wouldn't be a full quadratic formula. I'm not. I'm going to give you the height and say find the range. And you'll have to find time using the quadratic formula or your quadratic solver. If you're really struggling with the quadratic formula, there is a clever workaround. In fact, when you look at my answer keys, sometimes you may see I've done the workaround. The workaround is instead of finding time, you find VY final first. And then you find time using Eric's method of VF equals VI plus AT. You can get the T by itself. So there is a quadratic workaround. I just don't advise it. I'm going to use the quadratic formula. I'm going to gamble, since most of you said you got example 2 correct, I'm going to skip example 3. It's the same as example 2. Or did I want to do that? Oh, boy. That had some nice questions to it. Oh, well, let's try this. Uh, example four. What if the projectile is launched horizontally? So you've turned the page. We're over here. What if the projectile is launched horizontally? Well, we still have AX equals zero. AY equals negative 9.8. What was nice about launching it horizontally? Why did this make it actually the easiest of the three types of projectile problems? Do you remember? We know this. What was the initial vertical velocity if we're launching it from a cliff horizontally? Eliana. I think you're right, because I heard, saw you go like this, but I'm not sure. Can you say it louder? Zero. And this is key, because this is the one that is supposed to be the easiest, that kids often really, really panic on. It looks like their pencil just pukes on the page or something. There's stuff written everywhere, and it's most of it's nonsense. So yeah, when we're launched horizontally from a cliff, VY initial is zero. Why is that so nice? Well, then instead of having a full quadratic, I just have a half a t squared. I can get the t by itself by math 8. No quadratic formula necessary. Example 5. I think we'll finish with this. Maybe not. We might not get through the whole lesson. A projectile is launched from a cliff as shown. It lands on the ground 5.2 seconds later. Hey, what's that 5.2? This question is going to fall apart. If you know time, or they give you time, it's just plug and chug. It wants me to find the height of the cliff. wants me to find the range. Okay. This is a projectile. T-table. My physics no-brainers. Victor, are we launched at an angle? Did I say angle? Everybody, did I say angle? I'm not sure Ashley's lips moved. Did I say angle? Okay. Which trig function is Vx going to be? Which trig function is Vy going to be? So which trig function is Vx going to be? I don't care which order you do them in, but yeah, I think, I think if I draw it in, there's VX, there's VY initial, VY initial is going to be sine, and does it work out evenly to exactly 10, I think? That's nice. VX is going to be cos. Seventeen point three two zero five. 
Oh, and I know time is 5.2, and I know time is 5.2. Here's what makes this so easy. If I put time in, Kyle, how many things do I know in the horizontal column? Conveniently, I need three to find a fourth. How many things do I know in the vertical column? Three. Conveniently, I need three to find a fourth. I, I can find whatever you want me to find. So what does A want me to find, Kyle? Is that vertical or horizontal? dy equals question mark. So I'm going to use dy equals vy initial t plus a half ay t squared. I need to get the d by... Ah! Oh, bonus! It already is. It's going to be straight plug and chug. dy is going to be 10 times 5.2 plus 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 5.2 squared. What do you get? Kyle, what'd you get? Sorry? There's no way you got 74. Oh! Okay, because you, you, you better get a displacement that's negative because we ended up below from where we started, yes? Sorry, what'd you get? Negative. 74 point. Is that right? Oh, uh-oh, people shaking their heads. Okay, Ruby, what'd you get? Negative eighty point five. Ah, oh, now I'm seeing more head nods. Now this is technically a displacement. It technically asked for the height. Height is a scalar. Height would just be positive eighty point five meters. I wouldn't be too fussy on a test. I'd take either. Kyle, is it working? Because that might have been your first mistake in physics ever. Okay, don't clear your calculator. Let me hit pause. All right. We'll finish with this one. We'll finish with this one. Petra, what does B want me to find? Oh, dx equals vxt plus a half a... No! A is zero. That's good physics, but stay with me. Uh, what was VX? It was uh, 17.3205. T was 5.2. There's the range. Fahim, you good? Good to see you're really focused. Ninety point one. Okay. I'm also, because a few of you were asking me about ground at an angle, I'm hoping cliff at an angle might have kind of helped clear things up for ground at an angle. Ground at an angle is a little easier. you got more options and you don't get a full yucky uh, quadratic. I'm going to pause here. If you want to get a head start, now I'm sensing many of you are still finishing lesson six. That's okay. If you're wanting to get a head start, I'm definitely going to be assigning question one. That's five cliffs at angles that I'll just let you try. I'll assign more, but for now, if you want to get a head start, that'll be pretty good.